Welcome back, my friends. We're here to talk about 3D printing. Notice anything different about these orchid pots behind me? Probably not, but some of those took eight hours to print and others took 15 hours. So how do we drop almost half the time off of each of our prints without sacrificing quality? Well, stay tuned, we're gonna talk about it. So what is the key to supercharging your pet G prints? Well, it's a couple things. First, it's this right here in my hand. This is a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, and I'm gonna show you how to set it up and why it should be your default nozzle for all of your 3D printing. You see, most 3D printers like the Prusa Mark 3S that I use come with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Now this is great because you can get a wide range of prints, but it doesn't allow you to go very large in your layer heights. You can only go to about 80% of the total nozzle width for each layer height. So a 0.4 millimeter nozzle only allows you to go up to about 0.32 millimeters, whereas a 0.6 nozzle will allow you to go over 0.4 millimeters, significantly reducing the time it takes you to print and also increasing the strength of your prints. Now, of course, this isn't suitable for every type of print, every model that you're gonna print, but you'd be surprised at how hard it is to tell the difference between the two in many cases. And for a lot of your models, it's gonna make sense to start using this. Also, it's still super flexible. You can use this to print down to 0.15 millimeter layer heights. So this nozzle can let you go from almost the lowest end range that you went with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle all the way up to above 0.4 millimeters. So you can get this wider range of prints. This is why this should be your go-to nozzle for day-to-day -day printing. Now, of course, you can't just throw a new nozzle onto your printer and magically get these great printing times. It also takes a lot of tuning with Slicer. And so I'm gonna take you through all the different settings I've changed. And whether you're still using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle or you've swapped out to a 0.6, the Prusa slicer changes I've made will help you decrease your print times. And how do I know it works? Well, because as usual, I have this big pile of sadness next to me. These are my experiments and this is how I arrived at these settings being optimal, at least for the types of prints that I'm making. One of the beautiful things about 3D printing is the ability to do rapid prototyping. I was able to design and manufacture these orchid pots over the course of just a week or two because I was able to make two or three prints happen per day. Now, I can't even imagine that happening 10 years ago, 15 years ago, before 3D printing technology was mainstream. So let's take a look. You know, it's funny because with some of these, it's actually tough for me to remember what the layer heights were and the time that I spent printing each of these because if you're looking at them, you can't really tell that much of a difference which I think is a good thing. That's a testament to the fact that it doesn't really matter as much as you think it does. So this is one of the 0.4 millimeter prototypes that I've printed out. Uh, this one has 0.4 millimeter layer heights. You can see that the mesh, the mesh is probably where you see it the most, but honestly, comparing this to 0.2 millimeter mesh, there's honestly not that much of a visual quality difference. I don't know if you can see this, we're gonna get real close. But if you look at this, this was 0.2 millimeter layer heights, and this was 0.4. Honestly, if, if you didn't tell me which one was which, again, this is 0.4, this is 0.2. If you didn't tell me which was which, I don't think I would be able to tell either. Now what I can tell is the surface quality. So I actually don't think the surface quality on the 0.2 looks as good on the top layer as it does on this one. The other thing I noticed, the 0.2 millimeter, and I probably just need to tweak it some more if I were gonna go with that, but I'm not because it's so painfully slow. But the 0.2 millimeter actually had a lot more oozing. And so you can see all of these globs underneath the top layer that kind of show through where the filament built up on the nozzle, burned, and then was deposited on one of the infill pieces. So what do the mistakes look like? Well. Along the way, what I had happen is I started doubling my print speeds. I started doubling my infill speeds, my layer speeds, changing a lot of that to try and get the most out of each print. 
So where I started was this one. And, oh boy, this one was a, a big fail and you can see what I'm talking about. But I had the settings set very high for the layer speeds. And so this top layer was done so fast and it has the, I think it's an Archimedes spiral. It's where it lays down the top layer in one gigantic spiral. And you can see that print head was moving so fast through the pet G that it actually started cutting it and the layer just started peeling up the top layer. So obviously I needed to take my top layer speeds down quite a bit, but this is kind of the, the prototyping process that I'm talking about. You make mistakes and you fail, you tweak it and go from there. So this was the, the next print where I slowed it down. I, I didn't get that tearing in here, but what I did have is this center part was very soft. You can see how flexible that is. And the reason is because of this bridge. And I don't know if you can tell how much that bridge is moving, but it was doing the same thing in this, this print. I mean, you can see how much flex there is in that bridge. It's crazy. You wanna under extrude on bridges and you also wanna crank up your fan a little bit. So two things are gonna happen. So when you're, when you're laying down filament between two points that have no structure over them and you're bridging across, you wanna have the fan on so that it's cooling it as it goes across. That's gonna do a couple things. It's gonna make it straighter and um, it's gonna set the filament as it's actually going across the bridge. The other thing you wanna do and the reason you wanna under extrude and by under extrude what I mean is you can set the flow rate of the filament going through the nozzle and if you under extrude what you're doing is you're, you're cutting back on that flow rate. The amount of pressure that's placed on the filament at the tip of the nozzle and by doing that, what ends up happening is you set that first point on the bridge over here on this solid piece, and then you're almost pulling, you're creating tension to get the filament out of the nozzle to pull it across to the other side. Whereas if you were over extruding or you had a lot of pressure on the nozzle, what would end up happening is this essentially where you set that first point on the solid part of the bridge and then it just sort of oozes out and sags across to the other side. So you get this really ugly sagging bridge that isn't very high quality. So by just tweaking those settings, we were able to go from that to this. And I don't know if you can see this, but there is, there is no flex on that bridge. And you can see there's still a little bit of room in between each, each strand, but it's not enough to matter. And when you look at the top layer, it's pretty close to perfect. You can see in all of my prints after that, that the top layers were just started coming out flawless. They came out really nice. And that's what we want. Of course, that took a lot of trial and error. All right, let's take a look at some of the settings that made all this possible. So we're gonna start off, we're gonna go over here and you can download the Prusa Mark 3S 0.6 nozzle profile. It's a system preset for your printer. And when you select that, you can see I've got one that's called super fast pet G and that's got all of my kind of specialized settings already preset. And then when you go to the print settings in the drop down, you can select the, the actual nozzle size you want. And again, I have user presets that I've also made. So you can go 0.15 millimeters all the way up to 0.4 and technically you can go up to 0.48. I haven't tried going that high. I think I've gone 0.45 for the highest layer height that I've done, uh, but it is possible technically. We'll go with 0.4 and we'll again select my super fast pet G. In the filament type, I select generic pet. And so I'm using the Amazon Basics pet G. Obviously there are tons of other brands out there, but this one is the one I've been experimenting with and it seems to work well especially at the price point. So now that we got that loaded, let's take a look at the print settings that I have adjusted. So you can see we've got layer height 0.4 millimeters. First layer is still 0.2, kind of the standard. I have actually gone an extra layer height on the, the solid layers, the top layer. I go five instead of the default four. And the reason for that is when I go with four, I just don't get that nice fine finish that I'm hoping for out of my prints. So that one extra layer makes all the difference with my model. 
Um, I select most of the things here. I stopped doing the avoid crossing perimeters. It didn't seem to make a difference one way or another as far as quality is concerned. I do still go with seam position random. And as we talked about in my last video, the reason I go for that is so that I do not have one solid jagged seam across the vertical walls that I build. And so it's kind of scattered along each layer in a random position. It just makes my models look better. If you have something that has a sharp corner or an inner corner, sometimes it can hide those seams, those vertical seams inside of that. So, so for infill, I've gone with 10% for the density of the infill and I've picked 3D honeycomb. Actually, I like the way it looks and it seems to be really strong. It seems like I get smoother, more controlled surface layers out of that when I use 3D honeycomb than if I go with like, I was going with cubic before that. This just seems to work better. The very top fill pattern, I still use rectilinear. Under speed, this is where I made a whole bunch of changes. So the infill by default is 80 millimeters per second. I bumped that all the way up to 140. So almost double the speed on the infill. I haven't noticed a difference as far as the infill settling or sagging. And it seems to be just as structurally sound as it was before, but it takes half as long to print. Solid infill, the same thing, although the default value on this is 20, and I've actually brought that all the way up to 140 as well. Now, the top solid infill, this again is that top layer that we print. I've actually, I experimented with this at 40, that's where I got the tearing. So 20 seems to be a nice spot where I get a good finish, because that's what people are gonna look at is the finish on the top surface. So I wanna knock that speed down a little bit, make sure that goes well. And then bridges, the default value for that is 60. I actually dropped that down to 15. And again, that's just because my particular model happens to have this huge bridge across the water tray connector. And so I need that slow so that the fan is able to dry the PETG as it's bridging across the surface. Now travel, this is another one that I've bumped up big time. I've taken it from 130 millimeters a second all the way up to 200. So that's just the speed that between extrusion points. So that makes it much faster. And then first layer speed. In my last video, I think for PETG, I was doing 20 millimeters a second. I bumped that up to 30. That still seems fine. My first layers still look perfectly good. And then the next one I increased was, again, acceleration for infill. I bumped up to 1500 millimeters a second. And finally, you have to put the max print speed up to 200 millimeters per second. The default value is 80, and that's the only way you can get travel up to 250, or I'm sorry, up to 200, is if you also have the max speed up to 200. Under the advanced section, so I only made one change here, but this was, again, big deal for my bridges. So with that 0.6 millimeter nozzle, what I did is change the bridge flow ratio. And again, this is what happens when you've got one of those bridges. And remember I talked about, you wanna under extrude a little bit. You wanna have a little bit of, like the, the filament is being pulled out of the nozzle instead of just oozing out and sagging across the bridge. Yep, the default value is one. I changed it to 0.90. I tried 0.95 and I still had a little bit of sagging. So this seemed to be the sweet spot, at least for my filament. Jumping over to filament settings. So for the filament itself, we haven't done a lot here. We went ahead and we do the extrusion at 230 for the first layer, other layers at 240. The bed, I start at 85, and then I bump up to 90 for the other layers. No big crazy things there. The fans, the cooling. This actually, this isn't correct. I need to change this. So. Keep fan always on, I uncheck that. I don't want the fan always on with PET-G. You might want that with PLA, but not PET. And then I change the min to zero and the max percent to 70. My bridge fan speed, I bump all the way up to 70. And again, that's so that you really cool that filament as it's going across those bridging parameters. And that's it. And we also keep the disabled on the first three layers. Uh, it's just not necessarily necessary. And I also keep enable auto cooling active. Filament type pet, volumetric, all this stuff is the default. Filament overrides, 
we do do a couple things here. I do retract on layer change and wipe while retracting. And if you saw my other pet G video, you understand why this essentially pulls back the filament as you go over each layer change. No other changes there. And then finally, let's jump into the printer itself. So under here, we have the nozzle diameter at 0.6. We have the minimum and the maximum layer heights set according to what this nozzle can actually print. And then these, the rest of these are retraction related settings. So length of retraction. So how much to actually retract when you go to do that retraction and wipe between layers. I do one millimeter, which the default value is two, but that just seems unnecessary from my experimenting. And then the minimum travel after retraction. So this is the distance around your object or across your object that the nozzle has to has to move before another retraction happens. And so I have that set to two millimeters. It has to move at least two millimeters. I set it shorter because I thought maybe I'll get higher quality prints out of my mesh. But what ended up happening is it doubled my print times because it would have to retract every single time it moved across this mesh. And comparing the two results, it just didn't look any better either way. So I have that set to two and that's it. And we're ready to slice. So we've got these new settings in there that I just went over. We're gonna slice this and we're gonna see what happens. And we get a total print time of eight hours, 45 minutes and 45 seconds and a cost of $3.34. Now, if we change this back to the default nozzle and we change this to a 0.2 millimeter print, Let's slice it again and see what happens. Ouch. So out of the box, your printer is going to take 20 hours, 23 minutes and 48 seconds to print this. And on top of that, you're not gonna be able to tell the quality difference in the final product. And my version takes eight hours. You can almost print three of these in the time that it takes a printer set to default settings to print one. So that's why we ended up going with the 0.6 nozzle in these settings. I hope it helps you out. Obviously, this is not the ideal one-stop solution for every single model that you're printing, but it's a pretty good solution for a lot of models, and especially if you're doing rapid prototyping with PETG. So I hope this helps you guys out. Let me know in the comments any other questions or issues you run into when printing PETG or any other material. Let me know what you'd like to see next. I love really diving into these subjects and figuring out how to optimize the printers to get the best results for the cheapest and least amount of time. So let me know what you're looking for and I will deliver. Love to hear from you guys. Thanks again. If you don't mind, hit like and subscribe so YouTube knows my videos are worth sharing with the community. That's how the algorithm works and that's how I get more exposure on here. Thank you guys so much. Until next time. Happy 3D printing.